Lecture 4, Segment 1, Creating Isometric Sketches Using Orthographic Views But With Curvature. Remember last time we worked very hard to create uh, this view here, and we did that from its three principal orthographic views. We're going to do the same thing again today, only this time we're going to have a little bit of curvature thrown in, and this has an interesting problem. We need to be able to capture this curvature fairly accurately and do it by hand. Now the computer, of course, does all that foreshortening. You know because the axes are foreshortened that you can't use a compass. It's not going to work in three dimensions, so we need another trick. The trick that we're going to use is nice geometric uh, manipulation called the four center approximation method. It is an approximation. It is not exact, but it's so close for hand sketching, you're going to have a hard time telling the difference. Uh, you wouldn't use it in a professional drafting technique, per se, but you know, for doing something like what we're going to do here, I think it would be just fine. And remember, we can't dimension off of isometric views anyway, so there's really no real harm in using this just for our hand sketching. It's a nice technique, it's fairly easy to explain, and it gives you decent looking uh, circles and arcs in isometric views, because if you just try to blow them in by hand, you'll just make a mess of it. And I think you'll see that this will come out fairly nicely. So let's take a look, shall we? What we're going to do is, just as we did before, we're going to count our overall size so we can build a little box in our isometric paper. I've already done that. X happens to be 8, 10 for Z, 12 for Y. So 12 by 8 by 10. And I've already gone ahead and created that for you. You may want to pause and build your own if you're following along with me. And I've built that box. And somehow we're going to fit that solid into the box here. And we can see that we have an enormous amount of curvature to deal with. So we really have to right away ask ourselves, how do we draw it? Well, you start by building a template of your circles and arcs. And let me show you that right now. Take a separate piece of paper, and you can see I've built a template here for my top arc. And I've already built one for my other arc. It doesn't look very good, but it's a template. Well, how do I do that? Well, here, let me show you how. Let's do this circle. This circle's in the right view. It's of diameter 6. These are radius 5. This is a diameter of 6. So to draw a circle, and an arc, of course, is just a piece of the circle, so if you draw the whole circle, you can always get the pieces of arc you need to do the job. You start by drawing, in the proper plane, in orientation, draw a box that will fit around the circle. In this case, a 6 by 6 box. So let's do that right over here. So let's start with a 6 by 6 box. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One, two, three, four, five, six, and six to close. Indicate the center and indicate the centers on each of the legs. Now we do what's called the four center technique. I'm going to label each of these A, B, C, and D for the four corners. And then E, F, G, and H for the midpoints. Here's how the four center works. You start with A and you draw what are called the long diagonals between A and G, and A and F. So you're drawing the long diagonals. They bisect the opposing sides. If you had a compass, and you put it on point A, and put the other end on point G, the arc you would draw from G to F is the piece of the isometric circle between those two points. Conversely, you can go to point C, point opposite. Go to H and E. That arc is there. The arc HE is centered about point C. Now, the arcs H to G and F to E, where are they centered? Ah, well, that's where it gets tricky. It's not at D and B. It's at the intersections, and let's call it I and J, of the long diagonals. Then you can use your compass and set it on point I and sketch your arc, and also at point J, and sketch the remaining arc, and you have made a reasonably decent shot at an isometric circle. And you did it, it's called the four center approximation, because you have one, two, three, four centers. You see that? Point A, point C, point I, point J. Those D and B don't come into the game at all. And that creates what's called the isometric circle. And that is by the four center approximation method. 
This becomes our template. Now I just did it very quickly up here. But now we can go back, original piece, and if I know where this circle lies over that, now I can sketch it. So what I need to do is figure out where that hole starts. And it starts at a height of 7 up, and it comes 2 in. So if I come in 2, go over 5, and up 7, that point that I just sketched there very lightly is where this hole begins. All right, this hole, that's where it begins. So now what I'll do is I will attempt, best I can, to line everything up. And now I can simply use my template and create my circle. And likewise, I can use my other templates. And you notice this takes time. This is not something that just automatically happens. But now I've started to sketch my piece, and now I can really do things with it, because now I can come down like that. One, two, three, four, five. I know that that comes over like that. See, now I can do these straight edges. And now I know it comes over one, comes over one, and then here in the center, one, two, three, four, five, that becomes the center for this arc up here. And let me line that up. And there it is. Like that, I can move down to, because that then forms like that. And notice what I did here in this corner. Can you see it? Let me zoom in. See, what I did is that this piece of arc is hidden. I just drew it till it connected. Remember I always said, draw the stuff that you know you're going to see first. Then you can go and do the rest. Now I can come up my proper height here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a straight line. And then I know if I go over five, one, two, three, four, five, right at that point, will be the center for the back arc, and all I need to do is get my remaining template. And again, notice that I just draw it till it touches. So I just use the template, and let me zoom out, and there's my part. And that doesn't look half bad. I mean, it's not great, but you try doing it with a felt pit pen. So. Or better yet, don't do it with a felt-tip pen, because you're not supposed to. You should be using a nice pencil. Uh, but you'll notice that this template technique works really well. I mean, that doesn't look bad. It didn't transfer perfectly over here, and you'll see I have to really erase now all these you know, construction geometry lines. But it really made up pretty nicely. I think it does a nice job of, of making us see what that solid looks like. And now we've got a pretty good idea. And we did that fairly quickly. We just did it in 10 minutes. Uh, oh, admittingly, yeah, I drew a couple of the templates beforehand, but the trick is, is if you have these templates, it makes it very easy then to transfer it to your solid and get a shape that you can use. The whole point of this exercise is using the four center approximation method, which again, we said, comes from the fact that we use four pieces of arc, each at a different center, to generate that isometric circle. So a nice little piece of geometry manipulation uh, for our starting of the lecture today. And when you're ready, go ahead and jump into that. And you won't have to do this hand sketching again until we get to cross-section 3.1.